G'day guys, Ziggy D here. We've been playing some Flashback League lately, which has brought back some of the old League mechanics, and it's been kind of a fun look back on some things again. Uh, always a good time. High density Path of Exile gameplay. And someone asked what's been my favorite and most hated League, so I thought, let's do a tier list. Um, these are pretty popular on YouTube, so easy, add money. Mm hmm thank you, I'm gonna farm you guys right now. <laughs> anyway, I thought it would actually be pretty fun to take a look back over all of the challenge leagues in Path of Exile's history, uh, rank them, but also discuss them in terms of how they were received then, how they look from a modern perspective, looking back, and uh, how influential they were to Path of Exile's development over time. My tiers are S tier is the best, which is game defining or just beloved leagues, so either leagues that were super loved uh, or had a big, big influence on the game's design. A is a very good league that has been influential or is very well liked. B was, it was okay. You know, it was a fine league. This, this is not a fail. This is like, this is just acceptable Path of Exile stuff. C was leagues that were a little bit below that, they were a bit problematic in some ways, or they were below average in terms of fun and enjoyment, and they weren't super well received. And then F is our failure leagues that uh, just had too much go wrong with them, and ultimately were a good maybe thing for us to learn lessons from, for GGG to learn lessons from in the future. Things to avoid and things to do better and improve on in the future. So I'm going to go through uh, in order of release. So we're going to go back, take your minds back to early Path of Exile, and maybe some of you guys weren't playing that, so I'll go through and explain each thing here. But back in the day, we actually had hardcore and softcore leagues run simultaneously with separate league mechanics. So there was two challenge leagues for each, and uh, they were a bit smaller. You know, things were a little bit smaller in scale and in scope, and things were, they were simpler times, okay? But our first pair of challenge leagues was actually in 2013. It's been a while. And uh, they were Anarchy and Onslaught. So we'll kind of pair these together. Anarchy was Rogue Exiles. And actually, I think, considering it was one of the first leagues, was actually uh, pretty decent, a pretty decent league that had a bit of an influence on future game design. I actually prepared a clip here. This is some old school Ziggy action right here. So prepare for a little bit of cringe maybe, but let's zoom in on this fight there. <laughs> As you can see, I'm using Infernal Blow on my Marauder. Sick. Awesome, fun skill to level with. Zoom back out here for the kill. And come on, loot explosion. Oh! <laughs> so that's awesome. <laughs> Look at that loot explosion there. We were, Our minds were blown. Look at that loot. There's a rare in there and a currency orb. Pretty exciting times. But uh, M uh, Anarchy actually has been one of the league mechanics that stuck around throughout time. You know, Rogue Exiles have stuck around for a very long time and uh, still hold up reasonably well. They The fights are a bit fast. They die pretty quickly by today's standards. Occasionally, they can be a little threatening. At the time, they were very scary, and they gave a lot of loot. Just by virtue of the simple fact that they dropped one of every item uh, meant that they dropped a lot more loot than other things. So this is pretty early and a good example of later league designs of the idea of just having something that feels pretty juicy to kill. Very simple. Again, simple times. But uh, it was, uh, I would say, influential and well-liked at the time, and the League mechanic has held up. So people like, we, we, we loved the Rogue Exiles then, and Rogue Exiles are still like a fun kind of core part of Path of Exile. The idea we have these other exiles roaming around gave the world a bit more life to it, I think. And the actual mechanic is fine, you know? It probably needs a bit more revamping. We've had more exiles added over time with more interesting skills. The fact that these were enemies that had skills at the time was pretty big because we had a lot of enemies that were just very, very simple. But these were things that had sometimes a pair of skills or several skills. And uh, that was pretty exciting stuff as well as being, uh, you know, pretty, pretty looty at the time. And, uh, you know, it's not the most exciting thing in Path of Exile right now, but it's held up to a degree that is impressive given that it's one of the oldest leagues. The other one was Onslaught, which was everything's 20% faster, monsters attack faster. <laughs> this was the idea, it was like, they blew all their budget designing these rogue exiles for the softcore league, and then hardcore's like, what do we do for hardcore? Uh, make everything a little faster, I guess? Early hardcore design, to be fair though, was based around the idea of um, it, things being more challenging. Hardcore was supposed to be not more rewarding, but more challenging. That was the early idea that GGG had. And it was a pretty well-received concept initially, the idea that, well, hardcore is for people that want to challenge themselves more, so make the hardcore leagues just harder. So Onslaught was, you know, 
a reasonable choice at the time, but I still put it in F because you really can't get much more boring and uh, phoning it in than just putting a little bit of extra speed on Path of Exile. So I put that in F. It has had no influence on Path of Exile's future design. There is like Onslaught map mod, I guess. And it's a mod that you can enable for private leagues and things like that. But really, it's I don't think it had much a major influence on the game. Nor was it particularly interesting or exciting. Um, you know, Anarchy was the good times as far as that league pair goes. The next pairing uh, in late 2013 was Domination and Nemesis. So Domination was Shrines... And shrines are another thing that's held up reasonably well in the game. You don't really pay much attention to shrines, but shrines are fun. When you get an acceleration shrine, you have a good time. So that part has done pretty well. I, do, I don't know if I put Domination as well as high as influential and well-liked as Anarchy, though. I think it was okay. Domination at the time was just kind of like, okay, it's like, oh, extra map density, extra density, there's groups of monsters, people would die at shrines, that's always a good metric for a league, and uh, it was it was some fun, like, the shrines themselves were kind of fun, the game was a lot slower then, so you couldn't really do as much with the shrine, it kind of just wore off and you didn't really get a chance to do that much with it, you maybe just kind of, like, helped you kill the pack of enemies there. I did like the uh, risk-reward aspect of it, though the reward by today's standards was very low, just regular monsters, and the risk was, like, trying to do you dive in and try and grab it early or do you kill off the monsters carefully and then take the shrine to you know progress through the rest of the zone um it was okay by the standards then and uh as far as today goes you know it, it shrines are still a thing in the game and they're a, a fine minor mechanic in the game that aren't super impactful but a nice you know it feels good getting an acceleration shrine the other one being nemesis however i think was I'm torn between putting Nemesis in Influential and and uh, Well-Liked versus It Was Okay. I think I have to drop Nemesis down in It Was Okay. Um, honestly, it didn't add that much extra. There was, like, you know, just the idea of, like, having some extra uniques in the league and stuff like that. But Nemesis itself didn't really give much. There wasn't really much of a reward factor there. Uh, this was the hardcore league at the time, so it was still kind of following that trend of just being extra challenge without really any extra reward associated with it. There was, like, um, the very, very occasional, like, in a treasure Nemesis and stuff like that, but really very non-noticeable rewards. But by the, t you know, at the time, though, just the idea of extra challenge, and this was pretty interesting when it was first implemented because... It added some extra depth to the enemies that you faced, and Path of Exile was much slower paced, so the idea of encountering rare, actually reading its mods made some sense. I think it uh, doesn't get into influential or well-liked or anything like that, because it wasn't super exciting, and it has been a thing that's carried forwards into Path of Exile's history, um, but it, uh, you know, it doesn't really add too much, and now with the speed that we play at, it's mostly just kind of like... Uh, you see a volatile go off and you kind of play around with that. So some of the reworks over time have made it a little bit better, but really just firmly it was in the okay category. Nothing super exciting about Nemesis, I don't think. But at the time, a reasonable added level of depth there, and it was certainly more interesting than Onslaught. It might even just be kind of at the lower end of it was okay, but I'm, I'm satisfied with putting it there. Uh, next up, we had the pair of Ambush Invasion, and Ambush, I would say, was right up here. Ambush was strong boxes. Strong boxes have held up incredibly well, and uh, it was also quite influential in Path of Exile's history um, because it gave us the the idea of you you do a thing, monsters pop out, you get loot. <laughs> Pretty simple, right? But very, very like a very solid thing. And uh, I love I love lock boxes. Everybody loves lock boxes. There's good stuff to be gotten from them, and people still die to lock boxes frequently today which i think is a great part of the league mechanic so the strong boxes or the lock boxes uh still managing to kill people today and managing to kill lots of people then was really good it was exciting times playing that softcore league playing ambush was uh very very satisfying stuff um and uh i think that it's I don't think, like, GG will ever want to remove strong boxes from the game, right? If you were looking like, oh, can we cull some league mechanics? There's a bit too much going on. Lock boxes would stay in, for sure. So definitely influential and well-liked at the time, and I think still well-liked today. Everybody loves lock boxes, right? The other one was the invasion, which was the invasion bosses with several invading monsters. And uh, it did introduce some new mechanics to the game, the idea of guest monsters, um, at the same time, which kind of made the game a little bit more dynamic and interesting, something you probably wouldn't even notice today, really. You don't really even think about it. But uh, the invasion bosses... Invasion's an interesting one because I think today, people looking back at it will think fondly of invasion, but at the time it was 
very close to an F. <laughs> it was the first time that GGG really did a league mechanic where there was just some real problems with it. Uh, super badly balanced stuff, things that were literally buggy. Um, it was the only time in my memory that GGG ever did rollbacks for characters dying in hardcore. People died to the Carrion Queens uh, doing ridiculous amounts of one-shot damage that they shouldn't have been doing because they were bugged. And uh, GGG actually did some rollbacks, which is unheard of and definitely not a precedent they wanted to set, but something they felt like at the time they needed to do due to community backlash. Uh, Invasion was problematic and below average. Today, I think playing flashback, Invasion bosses are kind of fun. They are mostly not too threatening now. At the time, it was terrifying. They were terrifying. I do give the League plus points for being terrifying. And uh, I think I had a clip for Invasion as well, actually. Yourself. Chris has always said that he wanted to uh, he wanted to develop a league or a race type or something like that where everyone would be dead by the first beach. And uh, this is probably his finest work yet in that region. <laughs> I love that. It was his <laughs> it was his finest work. I do remember Chris saying that he really wanted no one to be able to make it past the beach. And uh, well, Invasion was the closest he ever got to that goal. Uh, unfortunately, though, not really very good gameplay by most people's standards. And it was rough times to be playing hardcore there. It did start to dip into the hardcore league mechanics to get extra loot, though. Um, so that was kind of that was kind of nice, and it started, I think, when this is when the bridge between the leagues started to close in a little bit. Uh, everybody empathized with hardcore players playing Invasion, <laughs> and in fact, Invasion League was actually one of the biggest max, mass exoduses of hardcore. In fact, where um, at the time the percentage of players playing hardcore was actually, I maybe maybe even been a bit higher than the players playing softcore at the time, um, which nowadays it's like heavily skewed in favor of softcore. Um, but that was like the first time people actually like quit Invasion and started playing softcore. And that did some, uh, that, that did some work towards mending the divide in the community. There was a lot of hostility between, uh, players playing different leagues at the time. And, uh, it was nice to see the bridge being, uh, kind of built between the two leagues there a little bit. So I give it some points for bringing people together, uh, over hatred of Invasion. So... Today, it's kind of okay. The Invasion Boston's are fine now, but uh, initial implementation, very problematic. Not quite an F, though. It was still, it was still kind of fun, and after a m few weeks or a month of work, it ended up being a pretty fun league. Uh, but definitely problematic. Rampage was uh, over here. This was the Call of Duty kill streaks. Uh, kill <laughs> you can get Rampage enabled through several items now, so it has made its way into the game a little... In a, in a way, it was the kind of just clear speed league if you cleared fast enough you could maintain a kill streak it was actually kind of difficult to do at the time uh a very uninteresting league i think um was kind of like mechanically fun to play but people lost interest in it pretty quickly uh i would definitely put it in the problematic below average uh, i don't put it as an f uh, it's better than onslaught right it's better than Onslaught. It was like the idea of having some sort of simple base mechanic that's constantly active. So in Onslaught, it was just make everything faster. For Rampage in Softcore League at the time, it was just uh, make the players faster and have extra reward to clearing fast. It's kind of funny to think GGG really kind of pushing the um, clear speed aspect now when that's something people complain about nowadays where, where like they feel like League mechanics really reward clear speed. This was all about clear speed <laughs> so uh a pretty uninteresting league really not too much to say about it um and the probably the biggest thing that hurt i think rampage at the time was the fact that it ran alongside of beyond which was up here so it was a bad time to be playing softcore and looking at the hardcore players in the much much more interesting league and going damn i wish i was a hardcore player but i really don't want to play hardcore and this is where the problems started to really expose themselves this idea of having the split leagues like this because players playing softcore are looking at the hardcore mechanic and being like wow i really wanted that and other in other cases they're you know the hardcore players are looking at the softcore mechanic and saying that's way interesting why am i playing this boring league in hardcore and uh did you start to, I, I think at that point the seeds were planted that would eventually lead to just running one league that was the both the same across both hardcore and softcore but beyond itself as a league, influential and well-liked, um, it had some problems that kept it from being S tier in that it was very uh, it was very ever-present and uh, that meant that it became fatiguing, I'd say. Player fatigue was a big issue in Beyond where it was like very constantly you were, had to be on your toes because just constantly these monsters were popping up and these little orbs are spawning and monsters are appearing as you're killing stuff completely unavoidable, un unavoidable, you were always engaging with Beyond. And uh, early in the league, it had some real issues. 
where monsters were spawning with like double regen and stuff like that and they were unkillable and things were very brutal and certain enemies were super dangerous and that definitely also kept it out of the S tier because again a problematic launch it was fixed pretty quickly at the time though I believe and uh, Beyond got itself into a pretty good shape. The thing that really pushes Beyond up though because at the time it was wasn't like it was good but not like a, this isn't amazing this isn't like a game defining uh, league here. But uh, over time, it got better and better to the point now where people love Beyond, right? Beyond something you want to you want on your maps. It's uh, it's a lot of extra monsters, a lot of extra XP, a lot of extra loot. Beyond adds a nice sort of level of juiciness to it, but it's much better when it's not something that's always active. So uh, definitely a solid league and a pretty good mechanic. And I don't know, it it. It, it may have had some influence on future design, but not quite as much as some of the other leagues that we're going to get into in a bit. But it was definitely a, a pretty satisfying uh, mechanic and I think enjoyable over time. I don't know, maybe some people might disagree with Beyond. Some people might put Beyond a bit lower because of the fact that it was very fatiguing. And it, if it, certainly if it was active all the time, it still would be now. But I don't know, I, I enjoy Beyond these days and it fits into the game well quite well now with the way we apply our damage and when we have like ling lingering damage effects and good aoe and stuff like that the beyond monster spawn we kill them maybe Im immediately and stuff like that it just kind of feels like good extra density which makes for some satisfying gameplay so i think beyond fits itself into an a category torment <sighs> torment was the next of the pair it was torment and bloodlines was the next of the pair uh a little bit of a rough pairing honestly but Torment, I'm going to be extra harsh here and say Torment gets an F from me. Uh, the League itself was probably one of the more poorly received Leagues up to that point. Uh, the Ghosts were... Or even now, today, Ghosts are pretty uninteresting and uh, difficult to do anything with. And also the like the idea of even trying to herd them into enemies is counter to the way we play the game. But even back then they were mechanically more difficult to wrangle into stuff. Uh, we wanted to because the game played a bit slow, but we just couldn't do it. Like, you couldn't get Ghost to cooperate. And uh, a lot of the time, the loot didn't really pan out that excitingly as well. Certainly, there has been some highlights for Torment, like Ghost fa like ghost Farming, Vacuum Farming maps together and Ghost and stuff. But these are, you know, kind of like away from the Central League mechanic and certainly unintended gameplay. I think uh, Ghost... I, I'm honestly the most surprised out of everything that Torment has stuck around. I am confused that ghosts are still in the game because i really don't think they add that much to the game they could be removed and no one would really notice the only thing that i like about torment is when it's a race or something and one of the bosses gets ghosted unexpectedly and it makes for an exciting moment in the race that's probably like the best thing is when like oh no i'm fighting phoenix and it just so happens to be double ghosted or something like that <laughs> you know the, there's those occasional very occasional highlights but usually it's just because this boss is super rippy now because of the uh just the natural like amped up speed or something like that of a rogue ghost jumping into a boss but honestly just i think a very uninteresting mechanic that mechanical mechanically wasn't interesting to play with and uh wasn't particularly rewarding i mean yeah in theory they drop a lot extra stuff but wasn't really didn't really feel like it was uh super worth it so torment was kind of lame sorry torment was kind of lame bloodlines i actually i would put below nemesis bloodlines it's a very similar idea this time champions have extra modifiers on them i think that uh bloodlines was below average though i don't think it was you know, this was much later than Nemesis implementation. It was fine when Nemesis was implemented, the way it kind of, like, added extra depth to the game. I don't think Bloodlines had the same effect when it was first implemented. It wasn't super interesting. Some of the Bloodlines mechanics were awful. Very problematic, I would say. Um, some of the... Most of the really bad ones have been reworked or removed or improved. So things like Bearers and stuff are much better now to engage with. And these days, it kind of works okay in the game. It's fine. Adds a little bit of extra danger to champion packs every now and then that you have to watch out for like corrupting blood packs and stuff like that and bears occasionally get people which is kind of fine but definitely below average and at the time we had things like i can't even remember but there was like there was the one where only one of the monsters from the pack could be damaged at any one time phylacteral link that's the one oh phylacteral link <laughs> so painful we hated it then and it, like it scarred us as players for a very long time afterwards so i definitely put bloodlines down in the problematic category warbands and tempest was uh where things started to get pretty spicy and it was the last of the paired leagues warbands being softcore and tempest being hardcore um warbands was where is it warbands was okay um the idea that the warbands would roam around the different zones was very interesting 
the actual warbands themselves I don't think were super interesting. They were kind of like more annoying groups of rogue exiles to fight, but not quite as rewarding. Um, there was some like cool like tie-ins with like league mechanics and stuff like that. I remember there was some pretty late implementation of the chaos warbands, and that ended up didn't kind of didn't end up being very exciting when it was ultimately implemented. But the idea just of the mechanic moving around zones and being like in certain zones and stuff was quite interesting. However, it really was just the worst version of uh, Tempest, which was far more interesting. And uh, at the time, Tempest was a big, big league for the game uh, for a few different reasons. So Tempest themselves, some of them being were pretty average and pretty boring. The reason why I put Tempest so highly in the A category is because Tempest uh, had a big impact on the economy. It was one of the first ones that had a really big impact on the economy and changed the way we like engage with the game, the sort of builds we were able to play, what sort of items were available to us and things like that. So there was like the magic finding stuff, which was really fun at the time. Tempest tracking those around the community pulled together to make tools to track where Tempests were. People would report where the Tempests were. The magic find Tempest is in this map right now. Get in there for an hour of like crazy farming. Good stuff. But the biggest thing was actually the corrupting Tempest. At the time, getting a six link was very, very difficult and you would just basically never get a six link. But what happened was the Corrupting Tempest all of a sudden started dropping a whole bunch of corrupted six links as one of the outcomes of the Vile Orbs. Let's get ourselves some six links. No! Oh! <laughs> Straight away! <laughs> yes! And uh, the Corrupting Tempest ended up having a big impact on the economy because you might get a few six links yourself and certainly I remember farming that myself and really enjoying it. But uh, the big thing was all of a sudden now you could go into trade, look for a six link that had your colors that you needed for your builds and just some stats and now you had access to a six link that was like an okay kind of stepping stone not as good as an actual six link you know like a proper crafted six link but something that was a bit more accessible so it was a very rewarding league by the standards of the time very exciting tracking these different tempests down some of them some of the tempests again were just kind of boring some of them were dangerous and to be avoided but it really changed the way we engaged with the game and I felt like it really brought the community together in an interesting way where we all sort of tracked and talked about this. There were daily Reddit threads on like where the crazy Tempest is now and stuff like that. And that one I think was uh, really exciting. I also like that mechanic of the things moving around the zones and uh, it was influential in, in the design of things like Flashback League. What, what's, what's going now? Where we have uh, these different mechanics in different zones at different times over time and it changes so i think tempest was a really fun league had a big impact on the economy and we'll see that in upcoming leagues as well we'll see that same idea repeated in upcoming leagues ggg saw that okay being gifty in certain ways can be a, an interesting lever we can pull to change the sort of builds people play and the way people engage in the game so we'll see that soon now on to talisman the first this was when ggg decided okay we're not doing the split leagues anymore it's not doesn't make sense for us to divide up our development efforts between two leagues and divide the player base. So let's bring the player base together. People can play in the mode they prefer, and uh, and then you know they both get the same league mechanic experience. Great, great ideas, good times. However, the first one they did was Talisman, which goes here. <laughs> Talisman was probably the worst F of all of them. Uh, not for concept as a concept. I think it was good. It was the first time they ever did a second tier of uh, like a meta progression within the league. The idea you collected these talismans, you could then use them as keys to unlock another tier of content, which was the Rigwald fight, a boss fight. However, everything about its execution was very bad. Um, ultimately, it was the it was a lot of a lot of inventory junk filling you up, collecting stash tabs full of talismans, trying to look for the right combinations. And then literally to the point where it, it, to upgrade these talismans to get to that higher meta level of content, you had to do, in some cases, a thousand, <laughs> like a thousand combinations of amulets or like hundreds of you know, like individual little granular things. So it was really, really annoying to play with. People burnt out on it really fast. The talisman encounters themselves weren't super interesting. There was some good talismans. The items themselves were kind of interesting. There was some good uniques and people kind of enjoyed engaging with that stuff. And very occasionally you'd see like the highlight, like this crazy talisman dropped and um, that was all fun. But the uh, implementation of all of the other mechanics of it, the actual like getting to the rig will fight, the combining of them, the, most of the time the talismans were garbage and people really felt like that. It felt unrewarding. It felt tedious. It felt painful and uh, it was definitely a solid F. Mm, I'm 
very, very rough. However, maybe some nice things came out of it because it did plant the seeds of some ideas that were growing to beautiful plants later on, beautiful flowers later on. <laughs> GGG turned it around in the next league with Parandus, which I put up in Influential and Well-Liked. Uh, there were some problems with Parandus early on. Parandus being the um, chest with a pack of gold monsters around it. You kill the gold monsters, you open the chest, you get to collect some coins. Then Granddaddy Parandus shows up with his sack of shiny loot and uh, offers to sell you, most of the time, nothing. <laughs> but occasionally something really good. So there was a few things about Parandus. There were some problems in the engaging with the monsters where some of the packs were really frustrating to engage with, especially in the early stages. And even today, I feel like there's like a lacking of hit effects. Like you don't feel any sort of feedback when you fight some of them, especially the bubble mobs. If you've ever shoot those, they like, they don't kind of feel like you're doing anything to them. Uh, thankfully, we have enough damage now where it's not a problem, but at the time we didn't have as much damage and it was problematic engaging with some of those. Also, I think they don't, they didn't kind of like interact with corpse stuff very well. So there was some kind of awkwardnesses there. Uh, the other problem with the league was just the picking up of tons of coins, a lot of picking up of shrapnel, which is going to be an ongoing problem for Path of Exile's history. But uh, Parandus followed the Tempest concept of being gifty in certain ways that allowed people to play different stuff. So it was there was a lot of people who had been like, man, I never get to play the build I want to play at this point. And uh, Parandus came along and uh, all of a sudden certain things that were out of reach for a lot of players became a lot more available. So, for example, Windripper was an item that a lot of people would be like, man, I'd love to play Windripper build, but I'm never getting Windripper. It was so expensive at the time and very, very rare. I uh, got a Windripper from Piranhas on day one, and I purchased it and uh, was playing something else. Ultimately, I decided I'd sell it on day one, sold it for a few exalts, which was a lot of money at the time for a day one sale. And uh, and it ended up being the case that like a few days later, people just decided that, oh, Windrippers were really common and Parandus was selling them constantly. So GG hand selected a series of like certain uniques and stuff that would be a lot more available or just maybe it just panned out the way, I don't know. But uh, all of a sudden, certain build enabling stuff became much more available. And that meant that all of a sudden in this league, people could play a lot of different builds they wanted to play. It had a bit more economic interaction. Uh, it impacted the uh, like availability of a lot of different items, just like how Tempest impacted the availability of Six Links. Brandis had a big impact on the game there. Um, so, and I think playing Flashback now, I'm like fighting the Brandis mobs. Brandis gave me a Tabula on day one of my Solar Cell Found Flashback run. Uh, it feels good. I don't know. I like it. I definitely put it up pretty high. Not quite as an S, but it's uh, it's up there. It was definitely influential in terms of that econo economic effect and uh, giftiness. I think it was maybe where GGG started to get a little bit worried, though, is like, if we, do we keep pushing this? Do we get giftier and giftier? And uh, maybe maybe this is where they started to think like, yeah, okay, we want to have some level of giftiness to it, giving the players things, but uh, maybe we change it up and do different styles of things over time, like gift different things, like Tempest giving six links, this giving access to certain uniques and, you know, the occasional, like, uh, I don't know, Headhunter or Exalt Orb or something like that. But uh, Parentis was good times. The next was Prophecy, which was a bad league, but a decent game mechanic. The best things about Prophecy League are the upgraded Fated Uniques and a couple of the Prophecies being kind of interesting, getting things like a Jeweler's Touch or some of the more interesting item availability ones. Um, finding Silver Queens, though, and doing most of the Prophecy encounters were pretty bad and pretty boring. There's a lot of issues where most of the Prophecies we were getting were outside of maps, and we had to constantly go back into the regular game and do really low-level content just to get rid of the Prophecies. Uh, early implementation was pretty rough and pretty boring. Most of the Prophecies weren't interesting. I remember joking about how the prophecies are like quests, except sometimes it's just like, you will read a book. <laughs> it's a prediction of something boring happening. Uh, prophecy ultimately became a, an okay league mechanic. Uh, every time I do fill up my prophecies and make an effort to actually make, stay on top of that, I usually end up getting rewarded in some way. And I kind of like that, but most of the prophecies are pretty boring. It's a bit better nowadays where a good amount of them can and will proc in maps. And sometimes it's extra good fun things like Plague of Frogs and stuff like that. That's adding extra good stuff. And there's the occasional really, really top tier highlight like um, Monstrous Treasure. As a league, problematic, but as a game mechanic, okay. It's with the occasional highlight like Monstrous Treasures and things like that. Next one was Essence League, which was a uh, big league for crafting. And I think the first time they really did like anything major with crafting, a lot of the other stuff was locked in place. I put Essence in uh, Influential World Liked because it has informed a lot of uh, future league 
crafting interactions where we'll see things like delve and later uh taking following on from essence and essence um was uh a bit came at a time where it was like rares are big again all of a sudden there was a lot of interesting rares we could craft uh essence became an interesting part of the crafting process engaging in lock and like connecting into existing crafting systems and uh later would sock it into future crafting systems as well still today people use essences for certain types of craft it's definitely been superseded by fossils in some ways uh taken over from it a little bit but uh in terms of the actual encounters and as a league mechanic the essence encounters were okay you know nothing super interesting you like click the click the frozen mobs and some mobs pop out pop out occasionally people would die to nasty essences and that was kind of cool you'd get the occasional essence and stuff like that we made some like charts some image charts to like show which essences became which ones that's when we started to see a bit more and more of that of like the out of game references to try and figure this stuff out talisman was probably the worst example of it though it did that as well by the way um we had to like use a chart to know which which talismans did what but uh, essence, uh, the crafting was the biggest thing, definitely. Just the fact that there was so much essence crafting going on and that it became such a core and I think pretty good part of the game. I think the idea of having somewhat deterministic crafting as an option there with some preset stats was uh, really cool. And we got some good rares out of it that opened up uh, new play styles a bit, not like super game changing stuff, but definitely allowed us to have a little bit more diversity in how we built our characters and how we geared our characters. So I like Essence and uh, I think it ended up being pretty influential, uh, if not super well liked, but definitely influential enough to get it into the A category. Breach, this will be an uncontroversial selection. <laughs> it's our first S tier, Breach. Um, I actually don't like some aspects of Breach. I definitely think it's not perfect. It does get into the S tier because it was it is so very beloved, <laughs> obviously, um, but also very game defining too. Um, literally leagues after it would be called Breach 2.0 and Breach 3.0 because they followed uh, so many of the design aspects of Breach. But uh, Breach was you step on a thing, a circle pops out, you have a very, like, a high-ish density uh, combat engagement. Early on, the um, it was interesting, because early on, like, the initial reveals, players kind of looked at it and like, oh, I don't think we'll like this, because I think that, like, density is going to be too low, it's probably not going to be very good. But when the actual league happened, it was people were loving it. It's been nerfed a bit over time, actually. <laughs> Instead of being buffed over time, like a lot of mechanics, it's actually been nerfed over time because uh, it was a bit too good for sustaining maps and stuff like that. Um, it, it it had a few issues. I have a few issues with it personally where it's like the idea that you have to go around afterwards picking up a bunch of little uh, shards and stuff like that. I don't like that aspect of it. But uh, ultimately, doing breaches does feel fun. The density of them feels fun. The, there's some like issues with the monsters kind of like spawning at the edges of the circles and stuff where they're not quite visible sometimes, but for the most part, it feels really good and it f works well in modern Path of Exile. Um, it also, instead of us just constantly running and killing, it kind of had us fight in an area for a while, which is kind of cool. And it was also uh, one of the first really solid implementations of the second level of league content which is where you're doing your breaches in regular content it's making the regular content more fun it was also optional so it could be avoided it didn't have the same issues that beyond had where you were constantly barraged by it you got to chose exactly when you wanted to open that breach or even if you wanted to for some reason you maybe you skip i don't know probably not <laughs> but uh you'd collect those uh shards you'd build the breach stones and then you'd open the Breach Lord domains. I had an absolute blast farming the Breach Lord domains. Some of the rewards were really good. Not all of them, but some of them were really good and uh, felt very exciting to farm for. It was a little bit gambling, but it was accessible. It was something you could very deterministically farm up to, um, apart from a bit of RNG as to which Breach you were actually getting when you were doing Breaches. But uh, certainly you could trade for the stones, and I enjoyed buying a lot of stones and farming them, farming them with groups that actually got me playing with other people, which was really fun, doing breach runs with other people. Uh, very, very good league and had a huge influence on future leagues after it, which you'll see you'll see in the upcoming leagues. Legacy League was the next one, which was the idea, let's, we've had a lot of leagues, let's bring them back in some way. And uh, unfortunately, it was problematic to below average and not very well received. Um, I think a good concept, though, yeah, I really think it's more relevant than ever the idea that this had, which is giving player agency over what league mechanics we're engaging in. And I really think that some of the ideas from Legacy, that idea of player agency needs to be implemented into the core game now. 
the idea that we can choose if we want to specialize a bit more in say delving or something like that, um, having more control over this stuff. But ultimately the problem with legacy was uh, a rather simple, just like user interface and player enjoyment one, which really goes to show the importance of those aspects where it's like you have these league stones and you constantly have to add them into the little UI and you have like inventory and stash tab full of league stones and you're constantly having to juggle those and manage them. They're running out at different times to each other. They had different amounts of charges and you're like, maybe if you didn't sync them up perfectly, it'd be really annoying. You'd like, open your map and you're like, oh, I didn't have one of my league stones in. So problematic to below average and not very well received, but I think some good ideas. The idea of giving that player agency was a really good one. So it's a shame that it's down so low on this tier list. I would really like it to have been higher. And uh, I really hope that GGG can take that idea and implement in a much better way. Maybe implement some game systems that give us a bit more player agency because I really think the game needs that at the moment. Um, so Legacy hopefully will become influential <laughs> in a way, uh, but maybe uh ultimately it didn't quite get there at the time so i don't know maybe we see a legacy 2.0 in the future that actually does a good job or maybe just a core game mechanic that takes that idea and does it a lot better because unfortunately the actual implementation was just bad and a good example of a uh, a promising league idea being really let down by user interface design and just like it not being fun for players to engage with because of that harbinger aka pocket lint league was where we had blue mobs. We see a lot of blue in Path of Exile, actually, if you haven't noticed. But uh, <laughs> the uh, it was a it was also something that was influenced by Breach, taking after some of the idea of Breach. We have uh, a, a mob that we don't in directly engage with, instead spawn circles. Very very consistent theme there of uh, enemies. And um, I don't know. I really rate Harbinger quite highly. I think that'll be something that will be divisive for people. I think some people don't rate Harbinger that highly. Um, but I think the engagements themselves are actually pretty fun. For me, they're like, maybe not quite as fun as Breach, but they're still pretty up there. I enjoy fighting Harbinger mobs. And, uh, the really big thing for Harbinger League as a league was that it was, it was one of the leagues that gave us the ability to run relevant content. <laughs> So, so much in early league PoE was, uh, about like, you just couldn't ha get access to high level maps. It was just not possible to sustain maps or it was not possible for the vast majority of players to play high level maps, which uh, was at odds with the fact that they were starting to run builds that were pretty powerful and able to take on that high level content. They just weren't able to get access to it. It was too grindy and too expensive to be able to do that. Harbinger gave us Horizon Orbs to get better access to maps, which is working its way into the core game soon, which is a really good choice. I think Harbin uh, Horizon Orbs are great. And Harbinger Orbs, which allow us to upgrade our maps, but also give us those um, beach maps, the Harbinger beach maps, which uh, gave huge, huge, crazy map sustain, multiple like tier 15s or whatever it was at the time, dropping just like crazy from each one of those runs. Um, it was a little bit... Uh, it was a little bit too powerful in terms of the XP leveling to the point where all of the people running 100 were literally just chaining the uh, beach maps, the actual Harbinger League mechanic maps. Um, but overall, it was a league that I think a lot of people had a really good time in because they had access to high level content. They were running builds they enjoyed. I remember I was playing Dark Pact, having a blast with Dark Pact at the time, smashing my way through high level maps and really, really enjoying it as a result. So really, uh, I would say... I, for me, really well-liked League, I think for a lot of people in a large portion of the community, being able to have access to good, fun content was uh, very well-liked. Uh, I think more so GGG were concerned. In terms of influence, I think GGG were concerned with some aspects of that. So I'm not sure. I think some of that's still playing out today where there's an ongoing discussion about access to high-level content, though it's certainly become easier over time. But uh, the other problem with Harbinger was <laughs> the the meme worthy pocket lint they dropped. Um, <laughs> shard, implementing shards of currency was maybe not the best idea. But that honestly was a minor part of the league, despite it being like the constant reward from stuff. I think the biggest impacts of the league were more just like the actual physical combat and the uh, actual access to map content. Um, but yeah, certainly picking up transmutation shards off the ground is not the most exciting level of reward. And uh, maybe that's been influential in terms of GGG being like, mm, maybe we should not do too much of that in the future. I don't know. I don't think the uh, the pocket link they spammed out was uh, <laughs> all that exciting. Abyss was the uh, very much um, <laughs> Breach 2.0. It did not quite get to Breach standards. Honestly, I'm a little bit torn on Abyss. I think it was just okay. I don't think it was even in the A category. Um, 
although it was very much taking after Breach and Abysses themselves are reasonably fun, I think there's a ser- there was a series of problems in terms of the league itself um, that uh, keeps it in the just firmly okay category. Uh, Abyss in the current game does a pretty good job of um, like being fun to play. And certainly since they buffed the ability to get the domains uh, and ha- a lot more lich fights and stuff like that these days, uh, it's a lot better. But in the league itself, it was one of the first times I remember the really strong complaint of like, we don't want a huge amount of just RNG for getting the bosses. Like people would just never, ever see a boss. I think I maybe in the whole league, I saw one lich. If that, I don't even remember if I got a single one, actually. I had, I've had had plenty of liches since then, obviously, but in the actual league itself, like nobody was getting liches and that was really frustrating for a lot of people. I also think a lot of the monsters were very problematic. It was very difficult to see a lot of their abilities. And uh, some of the monsters have the tendency to just really one-shot players in kind of a bad way. So uh, something just kind of appearing up, turning invisible, doing a teleporting attack, and then having a substantial fizz aura and just one-shotting you. So I, I put it in the okay category because there was a few issues like that. I like the lines. I like running along the crack and killing stuff. Feels pretty good in the current game. The league itself was pretty meh. I don't know if problematic, uh, kind of good enough to be in the okay category, but definitely not an A or an S tier. No way. Bestiary. This will be a controversial one because of the way I'm ranking these tiers, because Bestiary now is very well loved, and its current implementation, however, it has couldn't be further from its initial implementation. <laughs> they basically gutted most of the way the mechanics worked for it and kind of just kept, kept the idea of, well, Einhar, whoever, everybody loves Einhar, we'll make sure Einhar is there. And uh, he'll play a bigger role in the game later on. And uh, the cra- some of the crafting stuff, like some of the things the crafting gave you. So best area, for if you didn't play it, was basically you c- capture a bunch of beasts. We had to use nets to physically capture them ourselves. And we're like, oh, cool, Pokemon League. Uh, however... Uh, it was very awkward, which I'll get into in a second. But uh, you capture the beasts, use the beasts in recipes to get random uniques, random items, currency, uh, craft some things, and some meta crafting. And then it had some second tiers of content. In Bestiary, I saw very little of those second tiers of content. I've seen much more of it since, and those things are pretty cool. The items from Bestiary were really cool. I think um, the the like auras that they give, um, those those are quite nice and powerful and a lot of builds like taking advantage of those now. So like some of the rewards of Bestiary were really good and I quite like things like the meta crafting where you can make a duplicate, uh, basically like an eternal orb duplicate of a magic item for, me- for crafting. I think that stuff is really cool. So some of the actual rewards it gave you were really good. But best Bestiary was actually like down here, almost an F at one point, but... Uh, it's funny because now it's, I would say it's well liked, right? You guys would probably feel like best areas up here. For the league itself, very problematic. Uh, the nets just like the idea, we were even concerned about it before the league launch, but the idea of like slowing down and not killing the stuff, intentionally getting the enemy low, but being careful to not kill them. The, the beasts were frustrating and unpleasant to fight. Some of them were just like super rippy. And uh, there still are. Red Skulls can still be very rippy. But just the physical act of throwing the nets was super frustrating and clunky. And uh, ultimately, ultimately, to the, ultimately to the point where in order to implement into the core game in a satisfying way, they literally just had to scrap all of those mechanics. We'll basically just be like, we'll keep the idea of fighting beasts and the rewards. But that's about it. And Einhar, of course, because everybody loves Einhar and Einhar loves everyone. I feel like I feel bad about giving Bestiary a C, given that uh, Einhar is so lovable. But uh, unfortunately, the league itself was pretty below average for sure. Incursion was the next one, and I really want to give it an A, but it was, if I'm being more realistic, it was okay. Um, Incursion, basically the idea of traveling back in time to do a bank heist. (laughs) Um, I really love some ideas of incursion, but I think there was some missed opportunities here. So the idea that you build your own temple, um, like construct your own reward structure, construct your own piece of endgame content that you then run was one of the coolest implementations of this idea of like you have an initial part of the league and then you have a second meta level to it. That stuff is really cool, but there was ultimately some really missed opportunities there. So some of the major problems with incursions were that some of the uh, incursion encounter designs were very breach-like in a way, but uh, ended up being a lot less fun because, well, you'd walk into an incursion and get shotgunned by a whole bunch of mobs that were there waiting to shoot at you. So some of those issues got improved over time, but we definitely lingered throughout the league and were a big problem. 
So people just constantly going into incursions and instantly dying to something they had no control over was certainly unsatisfying. But also, Incursion was uh, one of those leagues that wore on people really quickly. Um, by the time you got to endgame, you'd basically seen nearly everything the Templar had to offer. There was like maybe two zones, I think cartography and the um, the Adziri fight room that would be the only new ones that uh, you discovered once you got to endgame maps. So even though there was this idea of like a good second level of it, it didn't have any reach into endgame, which meant that people were like... Uh, I'm done with incursion. Like I've seen everything it has to offer by this point. And GGG, I think has really paid attention to that for future league design and is trying to make sure that there's some really like higher stuff that you can push to at the like, or when you're at tier 16 maps, you're starting to discover new parts to the league. There's new stuff to uncover for players that push really hard. And that's super important. And uh, the lack of that in incursion really showed itself. So people, people got worn out on incursion really quickly and bored of it pretty quickly, ultimately, despite it being, I think a pretty good idea and uh, reasonably well implemented. It was just missing some stuff. And personally, I really am still to this day very disappointed that the boss is not more interesting because the boss is a cool fight. Um, and I thought that this was how it was going to work where based on the room that we made, if we made like a tier three uh, minion themed room or something, we know that it influences the boss fight and adds like minions to the boss fight. However, I thought it would also uh, influence the items that the boss drops. So the idea that you're constructing this whole temple and you're constructing the rewards you're getting from the temple based on the rooms you make. And then, yeah, of course, the boss is then also going to be influenced by the rooms you make. Depending on how the temple is constructed, the boss will be different. The boss has a different fight. And yeah, they did that, but they didn't do the, the loot for it. I, pff, I don't understand it. And I, I hope at some point GGG goes back and fixes that because the idea that you could deterministically farm to an extent certain rewards from the boss was really exciting so some of the some of those rares are pretty decent or can be pretty decent and the idea maybe that the like uniques that are available could be available from the boss depending on the rooms you constructed were really cool the idea that like oh man i really want some like trapper uh stuff i really want like high minion damage weapons with this unique minion mods from the uh ape from the apex but it's just it was all randomized which blew my mind so uh really big missed opportunity there Good ideas, um, not enough reach, and uh, some missed opportunities. So I think incursion could have been a could have been an A or maybe even an S if uh, if it had some of those things. So a little bit uh, a little bit sad that it was a bit of a missed opportunity there. Hopefully that's something that GGG can capitalize in future leagues. We're getting to the end, guys. This has been a very long video. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to upload this to YouTube. <laughs> I don't know, hopefully having fun. This is just something I felt like doing. I thought it would be fun for me to talk about. But uh, after Incursion, we had probably my personal favorite, Delve. It gets an S from me. This will maybe a little, be a little divisive as well compared to Breach, but because uh, I think some people just hate Delve. And I think that's fine. I don't think every league mechanic or every game mechanic needs to be loved by everyone. But Delve is one of my favorite parts of the game right now. Uh, it was huge. Like it blew my mind when they said, they said, oh, the league mechanic this time is basically going to be an alternative end game. I definitely have some issues with it. And in terms of its initial league implementation, there was definitely, uh, it was a little bit rushed out the door at the very start. GG fixed it really quickly though, or improved things very quickly. It was like within a week or two, they, uh, overhauled it a lot. I think a lot of people still kind of maybe feel a bit burned by that first week where things like flowing, throwing flares and dynamite was super janky. Uh, but uh, that was fixed very quickly. And there's definitely been an ongoing issue in battle with scaling and uh, how quickly you like keep up with content. And there is, don't get me wrong, some issues with Delve to this day still that need to be worked on. But overall, Delve brought so much to the game. It brought a completely alternative end game system that you can engage in. It brought some really, really insane crafting, like both super powerful and super um, interesting, I think. Like fossil crafting has been my favorite crafting of everything. It both sockets into existing crafting systems beautifully. It does kind of override some like essences, for example, to an extent. But, uh, you know, sometimes there's just alternates here. It integrated really well with Shaper and Elder bases. And you can use your fossils to craft those and influence the results. Um, just such an interesting crafting system to engage in and super powerful feeling and just super rewarding. And uh, the delves, delves themselves were maybe a bit too rewarding. Literally felt like a lot of the time I was just walking around scooping currency off the ground. <laughs> Figuring the delve stuff out, um, learning, you know, how to spot areas that would have fracture balls and stuff like that. I actually really liked the change to making the fracture balls have more fossils behind them and less fossils kind of just scattered around. So more of the breakable walls a bit more, a bit better. Um, ongoing issues that GG 
will really need to imp- uh, improve is like just getting kind of it's more just like balancing at this point to get it right to the point where we feel like you're able to access delves at the level that you're at in terms of maps because often players are kind of lagging behind in their delve and uh i think it's probably okay that it takes a bit of initial investment to get to the point where delve starts to get rewarding which is how it is currently i think that's probably fine because delve is so rewarding i'd rather it be that way than delve not be very rewarding and being very easy to access high level content but it definitely there needs to be a bit of a more of a balance uh worked out so hopefully that continues to be improved over time because this will uh i think you know moving forwards be one of like the very cool uh parts about path of exile as a being such a huge game such a huge action rpg that we have you know we have maps we have these different boss fights and we have the infinite delve dungeon system and maybe in the future we'll have more things as well um my biggest thing is that i just don't know why delve has a sulfite cap I don't think it needs a sulfite cap. Literally, the only thing the sulfite cap achieves in my mind is the idea that you feel forced to do delve at a certain point. As much as I love delve, I want to do it when I feel like doing it. If I feel like running a couple more maps, but my sulfite cap is full, and then I do one of those maps, and there's sulfite in there, and the sulfite is wasted, that feels bad. That feels very bad. I would love the sulfite cap to just be completely removed so we can just stack it up as much as we want. I don't see the problem with that. And then we can run Delve or basically be like, on Thursday, I just want to Delve. So for the rest of the week, I'm going to map. And then, you know, I'm going to do a couple hours of mapping each night. And then on Thursday night, I'm going to, I'm going to, on the weekend, I'm just going to do a crap load of Delving. And then I'm going to take all the fossils that I got and I'm going to fossil craft all weekend and have a blast. I would love for us to have that player agency. I was talking about it earlier with Legacy. I feel like the Sulfite Cap is the, my biggest annoyance with it. Still, though, I think um, game defining in the sense that, well, GG, GG have implemented a whole other endgame system here, a huge crafting system. And uh, I also think for at least a pretty good chunk of players, beloved. Maybe not everyone, though. So, I love me some Delve action. Betrayal. Betrayal, I'm not sure, man. I really enjoyed Betrayal. I really enjoyed figuring it out. Um... Oh, I think it was a little bit, it became a little bit by the numbers. So where we would ju- just refer to the chart, put the guys in the right spots and then farm them. Betrayal as a league, I think was fine to good. Uh, in its ongoing implementation right now is quite bad. Um, I'd almost put it as an F currently in terms of its current implementation. And I'm kind of somewhere around here. I'm honestly having a hard time deciding with Betrayal, so I'm going to pop it in the middle. Uh, maybe it, maybe saying that it would be an A, but its current implementation brings it down a bit. So I'm going to put it in that it was okay. Um, there's some really interesting stuff in Betrayal, some really interesting rewards, uh, very customizable content where you had a lot of player agency over things. That sort of stuff is really good. Some problematic fights, some things feel a little bit awkward, like breaking into the forts on certain builds feels very awkward. Um, biggest problem with Betrayal is just its current implementation. Like, it's not balanced for the infrequency that we fight them at now, where you're basically just never getting enough, uh, intelligence to do anything else. Also, Betrayal also would probably even as a league itself is brought down by the fact that the mastermind's another missed opportunity there um even with the changes to the mastermind not resetting as much of the board uh the mastermind was just not rewarding enough to warrant resetting your whole board the rewards from the actual betrayal uh safe houses themselves were really good um and worth shooting for losing all of your work to do a mastermind run that ultimately wasn't very rewarding in most cases or nearly all cases um it was yeah, I did two masterminds and basically will never do it again. <laughs> and that's a shame because it's a pretty... Uh, I kind of like the fight. Not everyone likes the fight. Uh, it's maybe a little bit messy. Certainly got a lot better after it. the mechanics of the fight were fixed. It's... Uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe problematic would be more of an accurate place for betrayal. I just kind of... Maybe this is just more personal bias in that I quite liked figuring it out and optimizing it and stuff like that. I had a pretty good time with that. Maybe it's actually problematic. I don't know. I'm curious to your thoughts on that. But uh, maybe maybe I'll... I'm going to leave it, it... It it was okay for me because personally, I did quite enjoy it despite its problems. So we'll put it firmly in the middle. Uh, but hopefully the uh, current game implementation is able to be improved. Synthesis... Mmm, a controversial one for sure. I really like Synthesis, personally. (laughs) However, I do see the issues for the vast majority of the player base. Uh, Ultimately, GGG seems like they're not going to be adding it to the core game uh, immediately. Uh, We'll see if they ever add it to the core game. 
I think after some of the improvements came to the league, the running ne the Nexus feels very rewarding. I've been playing Flashback and the most character progression I've made in terms of gear has been running both the Nexus and Synthesis Memories. Just tons and tons of loot. Like it's, it gives a lot of loot, guys. <laughs> Especially now after the changes, like those reward nodes and stuff. I thought it was a really interesting idea. I'd love to see GGG taking some risks and making some uh, really like interesting, deep, uh, confusing <laughs> choices. Um, for a lot of people, it would be a problematic league because uh, it was very confusing. That's why I put the question marks. <laughs> it was very confusing. I loved that because I loved figuring out how it all works and making guides on that. But that's my personal bias. I, you know, I would prefer a league be over complex for me to try and figure that stuff out because that's the thing I have the most fun with. After all of these years and all, all of these leagues, the thing I have the most fun with now is figuring out new systems and them being more complex is uh, really good for me personally. I enjoy making the guides and stuff. But for the vast majority of players, I think it's problematic. Um, for me, I kind of put it at an A, to be honest. I really, really like it. However, there is something that I can't put my finger on where ultimately I didn't. I stopped playing Synthesis uh, pretty early on. And I think maybe I'm still trying to figure it out exactly what the problem is. I think it's just that the changes came too late and we had played a whole bunch of pretty bad synthesis before then. So earlier leagues that we went through had some problems in the beginning, but were fixed pretty quickly. I think Delve being a fine example of a league that its initial implementation was really bad, but it was fixed within a week or two and was really good. Synthesis fixes came, I don't know, it felt too late. Maybe it actually wasn't that much later, but, uh, it's, uh, I think for a lot of people, we're, we're done with the league by the time the fixes came into play. It's, uh, I feel it's a shame that it's not going to be added to the core game because this is another example of something that could have been a delve. This could have been a delve in terms of this is a whole other end game system you can now uh, engage in. But uh, yeah, certainly the other aspect is the synthesis crafting. And I think the synthesis crafting produces some really interesting items and uh, is an interesting idea. However, actually engaging in the synthesis crafting is even as much as I enjoyed high-end fossil crafting and trying to make like big items and going hard on that. And I had a great time in Delve doing that. Uh, synthesis itself, the synthesizing of items is not enjoyable, is it? It's just not. Tracking down all of those items, trying to hit those like highest tiers of things, getting those 35, 35, 30 move speed boots together or other like more complex kind of combinations and stuff and tracking those down through PoE trade and stuff like that when people aren't selling them because they don't identify the value of them is uh, pretty unsatisfying. So it's probably a problematic league, though I personally put it higher, but I'm maybe going to just allow uh, just so that you guys don't rage at me too much in the comments. I'm going to put it down a little lower. Anyway, I wonder what 3.7 is going to be like. Looking forward to those melee changes. <laughs> that was my super long video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'd love to hear your thoughts and disagreements and rage. Ziggy, how could you put Delva top tier? How could you put Synthesis not as an F? <laughs> Ultimately, some personal opinions here. But anyway, guys, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thank you very much for watching.